Hello everybody, it's um, Steffi from The Makers here and um, it's just such an exciting day because it's the first of the month and on the first of each month we always release our new subscription boxes and that's why you're here, um, I'm assuming, to watch what's going on. And um, the bad news is I'm sitting here in anticipation because the postman hasn't been yet. You know that feeling when you're like, is that the postman? Is that the postman? You run towards him, have you got my boxes? And then he hasn't got them, but my postman hasn't been yet, so I'm waiting very patiently. I haven't rung the makers because there is the postman! Special delivery! Special delivery is just coming! And as every good, um, as every good, um, um, citizen, you have something at the ready for your postman because they're working extremely hard. Ooh. Oh, thank you so much. You can have this. That will keep me going delivering all the parts. That's it, yeah. And he, um, she is not wearing shorts, but, um, yeah, I'm working on that one. Oh, I've got two parcels. I'm so excited. Cheerio, Pat. Bye. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> um, so, yes. And um, if you um, if you are f um, a little bit like this, we of course get lots and lots of responses from people, and they say, "Oh, I think my subscription box has been missed. Oh, I I um, I don't know where it is. Just bear with Royal Mail. They're really working hard, and um, um, we are we are on top of our orders. But um, everywhere in the country, there is a different situations with. You might not even see your usual postman or post lady. Um, you might. See that maybe you only get your post once or twice a week. I've heard of people um, where that is happening, depending on where you live. However, for now, we're in business and I'm very excited. So this is how your um, two of your subscription boxes will uh, drop through your door. This is the fairy one. This is the maker subscription box. And um, the surprise box has arrived a little bit early. So this is basically what that looks like. And we will be looking at all of them individually. But before I do that, I just want to see who's here. So, um, Diane is waiting for her coffee. Lucky you to get a coffee delivered. I had to make my own tea. Um, hi, Diane. Um, hi, Pauline. You are really looking forward to this month's box. I know. Um, Fawn in the, in the maker's box and the uh, pansy flower fairy and in the fairy box and then of course there is um the surprise theme is um it's all about sweets um hi ross um another di uh, no no that's the same yeah no another um diane um now i can't remember which diane has got the dog called button but he was watching me yesterday so i have to give him a big shout out button hello and he's got a sibling called stitches or stitch which i think is hilarious um hi sue Hi Helen, um, hi Donna, and um, I think there are quite a few people watching, um, so there will be some hiding in the background, but that's quite alright because um, you can if you want. So um, which one shall we start first? Any preference? Fairies or fawn? Fairies or fawn? Anybody? Oh, <laughs> Donna says hello Sophie. Oh, did you... Did you see that um, um, the postman really was so cute? Um, but it was so much fun making it all up. <laughs> We're like children. In fact, um, I got a memory today that today is uh, the day where our um, book, this one, Making Needle Felted Animals, came out five years ago. Already five years. That's when all the trouble started. And um, that's when the makers were born, basically. Um, we have got our official anniversary in June, but um, it all started with a book and then it just got better and better every day. So just as a little um, happy birthday to us for um, the anniversary, the fifth anniversary of our book. Um, fawn, 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 fawn. Oh, okay, I think there's definitely, um, yeah. Oh, button and stitch. So it was, Di it was that Diane. Um, I'm here today and say hello. Oh, do I, did I get a little waggle off the tail? I love dogs. Um, okay, so we're doing fawns. That's your, that's your vote and that's what we're going to do. So um, I'm putting this to one side for now. If you're a brand new subscriber, 
this is the moment that everybody always waits for because they always come wrap, um the boxes always come wrapped up in the in the red wrapper so the postman can hardly hide it from you because if you see him walking down the lane um with a red parcel it's very likely to be our subscription box and we've even heard of people who um literally assault the postman to <laughs> grab it of him and run inside and um always pleased to see these red boxes so let's open it up um what what is really good to know is um that we are putting this in a paper bag so all of this is paper and we're actually wrapping it also with um the brown tape is a is a paper tape as well and so you can recycle um the whole wrapping the whole um wrapper on the outside as well and you should be able just to go all the way around um and undo it and then if you get to the top where this is where there's another bit of uh, tape you can just open that up and that's how you get inside it's um easy when you know how they're wrapped how to do it so if you um if you manage to pull it out then that's great but if it needs a little bit of help then just undo this um strip of um, tape as well and then turn it around out comes the maker's subscription box and um, it's in a box and it tells you on the front what is in it. So we are on number 36 with this box. This is now over three years have we been running these um, subscription boxes and they are hugely successful, really great value for money. Um, if we were to sell them just as a, a one-off kit to anybody, they'd be twice as much, but um, obviously we don't do that. Now, the one thing that just realized this I didn't bring a toolkit with me because when you get your very very first box you always get in the makers box you get um, a toolkit which is basically a felting mat and then you get a set of six needles which you only get in the first one and if you um, keep them obviously you can reuse them so here we go open it up how exciting is this and um, in it you will always get our monthly newsletter so so this month's we just basically tell you what's new. Um, there's lots of, but they obviously that changes every month. And on the back of this newsletter is always a free tutorial. So whether you want to um, keep it all to yourself or you want to share it with your friends, um, that's entirely up to you. And um, this month it's all about rainbows. Um, so that's what you always get in um, in the in the makers box, but that obviously changes with every month. And then um, we wrap it all nicely up with um, tissue paper and um, you can open that up. And then the next thing you get in your box is the Maker's Box newsletter. So on here you will always find useful information that um, there's always a little story um, or intro introduction to the to the project and I will read this from the front here and that says uh, if you don't want to know this yet because this is too exciting then just um, turn the sound down um, makers box newsletter and this is obviously number 36 May 2020 the large fawn from from dawn to fawn is the headline it's the time of the year where new young young lives spring into the world oblivious to what we're all going through at the moment animal babies and birdsong are ever present and a sure sign that there are always new beginnings if you're lucky you will see a fawn sometime in your life in the wild and their beauty and vulnerability touches our hearts you will fall in love with this one i think you already have so um and then other than that you get um um here the box contents laid out maybe a little a bit of information if you need to and know something about um the particular way of making this you always every subscriber in here gets um a discount code that uh, allows you 15 percent off a particular collection and this um this collection is obviously to do with making fawns and we leave this running until the mid of the following month so this one um, is valid until the 14th of June and you get the code in your box I won't say it here now but um, with this one you basically get um, um, wool buds basic core wool and wool tops and for that you get 15% off the other advantage you get if you subscribe to um, one of our boxes we can uh, combine postage so if you want to add anything into the box then you um, just place an order and where the code box is you just write down add to subs 
and that um, gives you free postage and we know that we, you want it with the next time your subscription box comes out. If you forget to do that and you just say somewhere in the notes, uh, please add this to my subscription box, we will refund you your postage. We really, we do not make money on postage, never. Um, so if, even if you've overpaid postage, we will fund you. Um, not not on the makers box. We know exactly what they what postage it costs. But if you've ever you you might be one of these people who have had a refund on postage because we don't just keep it. We give it back to you because it's your money, and we um, and our system has overcharged you. So just 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 to reassure you. So the second thing you get in the oh get another delivery. Special delivery. Oh, it was the postman. He he left oh, his oh, he, he left the toolkit behind. <laughs> there you go. That's what you get in your very first maker's box. Um, a foam mat, but very soon, very very soon. In fact, sooner than um, it can't be soon enough. You'll be getting our brand new basic wool mat. Now this is revolutionary for months and months, maybe even years. We've wanted to get rid of these foam mats because. Even today, I just heard on the news how much plastic there is in the ocean. Well, the blame the, the blame cannot be with the makers anymore because we now um, have uh, these um, specially made for us wool mats. And you get two similar to the earth mats because um, this is the thickest they can be produced. And uh, they, they you do need two layers. They're not as pretty. They're not as... Um, as nice as the wool mat, as luxurious, but these will be absolutely brilliant for your projects in kits and in um, in any of our boxed, um, whether it's a starter box or whether it's a kit or whether it's the first subscription box, you will get a set of these um, and um, we can't wait for you to try them. And then, like, like I said, you do get the needles. So you might get one of these for now, but almost certainly in the future, you'll get one of these. Definitely by next month, if not, um, over the next few days if you get your first subscription box then. So then in the subscription box you get the instructions. So what's brand new about these instructions in on all of our instructions is that um, you have got um, a ruler here on this side. Sometimes we refer to measurements and then you would um, can use this and on the side it's always in centimeters but some of you work in inches so this is particularly useful um, then you've got it straight there and you also get in most of our instructions now you get templates this is something that people have really wanted and we've listened to you and we've done it so that when you make something you can hold it against um, this template and then you can see whether you're spot on with the size whether you need to add a bit more or whether you need to felt it down a little bit more it's just an extra visual guide of how um, to make the projects in the makers boxes and then you basically have pages and pages of very very simple step-by-step -step instructions and uh, some of these obviously refer to templates so you, you have to go and find them but it just um it just shows you every single step very very clearly written um, with photographs that um, you can use as a reference um, it's always good to know that at some point in your make your phone for example looks nothing like a phone but maybe more like a duck so you know that's absolutely natural so don't feel dis despondent or uh, despaired by this just look at the photos and you can see you're on the right track so you get your instructions in there as well and then um, it tells you obviously in the instructions what you get uh, what you need to make just the phone but in the newsletter it will tell you that th on this occasion there's something extra in there and what's extra in there is um, reindeer um, lichen and um, this stuff I won't pull it all out because it's a bit messy is actually it's really bouncy amazing um, well it's it's alive basically <laughs> and you can use it um, as a as a nice um, um, area to rest your phone on um, so that would be that's basically in there as well and you get enough so that you can um, put your phone on there and then you get um, usually a massive big bag of wool um, we actually have to really stuff it in there and um, that's um, all explained these are the this is the wool you're getting there is a lot of white because we're making the shape in white first and then we're coloring it in and then you have got your um, colors um, in the in the bottom of the bag and usually we pack it in the order of how you are using um, the different wools so that's um, all all there and this month you get a massive big lump of um, lanolin rich and then you get a massive big lump of 
basic core wool and I will come back to this and explain the difference um, in a minute. You get a long strand of um, Manx Lauten and then you get a third white but it's a much nicer white and that's our New Zealand Merino and then you get two colours um, of um, yellow and black and um, the black is mainly to make the, the eyes and the nose and the yellow is um, to give the horn a golden look. So I'm going to put all of this back in. Oh God, just pull the needle out. Um, because I've got some at the ready to show you some very specific um, little tips and tricks on when you make your phone. So there we go. We always use um, Ziploc bags and we really hope that you can reuse them. Um, we'd love to find a different way of storing the wool but um, airtight seems to be the only way to keep the moths out and um, and that's why we really hope that you do reuse these um, when when you have emptied them and maybe put something else. I'm just gonna put the box down now because what I want to do now um, is, oh yeah, and the other thing you always get in our, oh, I have to, oh, there's something else in there. You also get a piece of wire. I will explain what that is for. Sorry, I've just realized there's more in the box. And then you always get a free sample as well. So these are our free samples. We used to pack them into uh, little Ziploc plastic bags, but no longer, we now tie them. Um, to a card paper and then that paper that card can also be recycled and this month it's all about rainbows and so we've put a little bit of our um, parrot um, wool in there and you definitely um, can use this there is enough um, for small projects or mixing the wool in just to give you a try of what that wool is like so um, I'm just gonna check how everybody um, what everybody's saying and um, how everybody is um, oh, I've got to, got to scroll up a long way. Okay, so, so um, sorry, Helen, we started with the phone, but I will come to the fairies, I promise you. Um, hi, Faith, there's, um, um, uh, Faith has joined. Um, who else is here? Um, okay, so um, there is a shout out for Margaret, but she hasn't made herself known, I don't think. Hi, Jana. Um, so, um, Jana, love my subscription box, even though I don't always have time to make them up. Well, it's become a bit of a theme that people collect them um, for um, times like this, maybe, where you've got lots of time on, um, on your hand, or most of us have anyway. Um, also, please remember that deer leaf fawns tucked away safely to eat. That deer leaf deer leave fawns oh that's it it's got it's nothing to do sorry this, <laughs> you could hear my brain clinking then didn't you also please remember that deer leave fawns tucked away safely while they eat so if you see one that it's on its own don't panic and interfere mum will almost certainly be back that's actually brilliant advice because that's exactly what happened to us we saw this Oh my God, it's just, you have to see one for real. Has anybody seen one for real? We saw, we saw a fawn lying and we thought it's been abandoned and uh, we, we, we were so tempted to go up to it and just give it a cuddle, but we didn't um, because that's exactly um, uh, right, Ross. They, they do get um, left um, somewhere safe. It's almost like, there, there you are, stay there. I'm just, mum, mum's just gonna have a bit of food and then I come back and get you, don't move, that kind of thing. So. Um, that was, um, that's good advice. Um, Faith, I've now signed up for um, the, uh, both the monthly make and the surprise boxes. I can't wait to get stuck in. Very exciting. Um, I get both too, says Pauline. It um, uh, then keeps me going all month. Perfect. Um, I started the monthly boxes with the teddy bears picnic one. They are great. Oh, thank you, Ross. That's amazing. That's um, definitely almost a year ago now. I love the fawn, it's just adorable. Thank you, Anita. Yes, the ruler is a great addition. Thank you, Diane. Um, and um, what else have we got? So pleased we have a template to match up now. Yeah, people have given us that feedback. So we now try and do templates whenever and how often we can. Um, you love the books. Thank you, Sonia. Um, I'm so happy to finally get to try the lanolin rich core wool. Thank you for that. Oh, you love it. And um, what else have we got? D, um, hi, I came on, on late 
um, sorry, so looking forward to the phone. You haven't m messed, missed too much unless you uh, needed to um, share my excitement to um, getting the postman through the door and receiving the um, subscription boxes. That was the most exciting bit about this was planning it in advance and um, just playing around and messing around and just having a bit of fun. We, I must say, we're missing having a bit of fun. If you have met Sophie and me together at any of the, the shows, we usually are a little bit silly and a little bit... Um, I don't know, just enjoying ourselves. And it's been um, a bit more sinister and, and um, serious the last few weeks. So this was uh, quite refreshing to have a little bit of a, um, yeah, a bit of fun anyway. Um, oh, Helen is not getting all the chat. I have no idea why that is, but maybe somebody can help you here on the, on the comments. Um, so Pauline says the free samples are, are um, great. And I reuse the bags for wool and, 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 and bits. Thank you, Diane. That's exactly what we wanted to hear. Right. Um, and Teresa says also, I can't see everyone's chat. I don't know. I have no idea why that is, but uh, maybe you can just quickly Google it and find out um, what's stopping that from happening. But I really genuinely don't know. But if anybody's got any ideas, just pop it onto the comments. Hopefully you can see that. Um, or I read out the comments anyway, and then I can um, help you with this. Um, oh, it says if chat is missing, log out and log in again. I did this. It did this to me yesterday. There you go. Got your answer. Excellent. Right. Let's do a, a few techniques. So let's have a look at the phone. First of all, it's quite a substantial size. It has got um, a head, two ears, very big needle felted eyes. So they're not actually um, they are Everything's from made from wool. There is a tiny bit of wire inside and um, I will explain um, why that is. And um, this is what it looks like underneath. So the legs are actually, they're not um, terribly fast and they're just sort of felted. And uh, as you cover it with wool, that's how um, the legs stay in place. So you can, um, you can in theory, change the feet round if you wanted the um, front leg to go be visible or the back leg. And um, then it's got a, a tail, which is um, actually slightly shorter than um, fawn's tails. But that's because it's lying down and you don't need to make it so big. So um, the way it starts is that um, you're needle felting the head and um, there, are, there are step and step, step by step instructions and that should be quite um, easy to do. And then you're putting the head to one side and then you start layering the wool. Um, and for this, you're using the basic core wool. You're starting to make a shape and build up the shape and build up the shape by just wrapping wool around it. And, um, and sort of holding and, and, and the measurements of how much wool to use will be, um, I've, I've tried to, as much as I could to give you measurements um, if you have scales at home, but also to give you a guideline if you just have to use your eyes to gauge how much wool you're using. So I've tried to say half this and then quarter that and use whatever, whatever. So hopefully that will work for you. Um, and I must say, we, we don't normally get um, people um, getting confused questions or anything like that. So that should be fine. So the main thing that I would like to show you today, for one, is how to make um, the legs, because that's a new technique. And so I thought that might be quite nice. And what we're trying to do is, and Emma is um, here um, watching this too, we're trying to um, give you that tutorial, but instead of watching this whole video we're just going to take out that bit about the leg tutorial and have that as a separate tutorial maybe a couple of minutes or something like that and put that on our website with a phone um, subscription box or maybe as a free tutorial or maybe both and it will also go onto youtube so that you can just revisit that bit when you get to it so while i'm doing this i'm literally just concentrating on that but basically this is now the tu tutorial of how to make one of these legs for the phone, okay? And for this, you will use this wire that comes in the subscription box. It's a, it's a really sturdy wire. It has got um, a paper covered around it. And you're using this as um, a way to add wool over the top so really tightly and then you're going to slip the wire out and then you just end up with um, a relatively stiff long sausage of wool. 
And the way it works best is by using the lanolin ritual, which, um, as mentioned, is in your um, maker's box. And to do this, you start, and this is the tricky bit, because what I normally say is when you wrap wire, I say, oh, use some beeswax for balm, or sometimes you can even put glue on to stop it from slipping around. With this, I don't want you to do that at all, because you're going to have to pull the wire out at the end, and you really don't want this um, to be fastened on. So you're going to have to find a way of getting this nice and tight. What I do, and I'm just going to go a little bit smaller so you can see it um, a little bit um, closer up. What I do, I hold on to um, the wispy end of the whirl as tightly as I can. So if I pull here now, I've got a bit of a tension going. And then you are wrapping the wool like a ribbon around that bit to get it nice and tight. So to, at the moment, I'm not letting go with my uh, with this hand, with my right hand, because I want it to be, um, I'm holding it nice and tight so that I'm literally letting the wool grip into itself. And at some point, you're going to have to let go of it because you have to go along that wire where my hand is. But now, if I pull it tight, it's not actually moving. Can you see? It's, it's, it's holding nice and tight. And now I can start layering the wool over it without it slipping around. And um, what I often do is when it's established like this, I turn the whole thing round. And then I'm just going to turn the wire and wrap the wool around it. Now you do need to be quite, um, you need to make this quite tight and uh, you're not going all the way up the leg because then you would be making um, far too long a, a leg. So go by the instructions and I'm just going to pull them out and I'll show you that bit so you can get a sense of how um, we word this and how we ask you to do that. There you are. So this is the bit I'm referring to. So you are, um, you're going to go up the leg 16 to 17 centimeters. You can measure it against the side here. Um, so you've got your um, tape measure here on the side and then you just literally follow the photos and, um, and get to that part of the leg. And I will show it to you here. So I'm wrapping this around. I'm gonna put a bit more speed up now so we get to the end of this leg. And you can turn it around as I did earlier to speed it up. Just all you need to do is keep this nice and tight. No needle felting required at all for this. Um, and um, go 16 to 17 centimeters up that leg. I'm going to uh, measure that in a minute against my um, tape measure. Um, tease the wool as you're going along. So don't um, put too thick a layer on that stops you from keeping it nice and tight. And if need be, wrap it. I'm just going to measure that quickly, making sure I'm um, going the right. There we go. That's about the right length now there. And uh, so now I'm going to turn around and go over it again. And uh, once you've, ha you've got the first layer on, it's actually a lot quicker um, going over it again, as long as you've got the first layer nice and tight. So you're putting the second layer over it. Um, and then when you get to the end at any point, it just so happens it's um, as I got back, just let these wispy ends completely sink into the wool. So that, this is what the looks like at the moment. It's a little bit like um, candy floss, um, except it tastes nothing like it and certainly doesn't smell as nice. Um, so and then you are starting over again, put a second layer on and it also tells you in the, in the instructions how thick the leg needs to be. So. You will um, measure that again against the um, the tape measure if you haven't got anything else to hand. So they're quite handy to have um, these little centimeter um, um, strips on the side of the instructions. There we go. And I'm just going to check how thick the leg needs to be. Um, but the principle is the same that you just keep going round and round, keeping it nice and flat and keep the wool really tight on um, um, on the wraps there. So um, how thick does this need to be? I'm just going to have a look now. And it basically says here, the leg should be firm. The more thin la layers used, the firmer the leg will be with um, 
no need to felt it down. So I'm reading this upside down. Though you can tidy uh, one end, um, like the foot, by stabbing into it um, a few times, you will use all of the um, allocated wool, so seven grams per leg, and um, it needs to be about um, two and a half centimeters thick. So I'm just going to check that against my, yeah, that, that'll do. So I've made my first leg and, and now I'm going to slip it off. I'm going to go a little bit, um, uh, a little bit bigger now. Um, so there's my leg. It does look a bit like a, um, like a, a, a not quite a finished candy floss here. And I should be able to just pull the wire out there pulling it out and I've got a leg here that doesn't um, it's not it's solid it's not um, flopping around and then all you're going to do is you're just felting flat one end like that and um, and when you get to fasten it to the fawn and I have got a I've got a second fawn here. This is a little bit bigger. So when you get to fasten it to the fawn, and when you do that, you haven't got any cover um, on there yet. You're using the bit that you haven't felted down. And this is just another way. And that's why one, we've got one of these um, templates in here actually shows you how the legs are going to be um, put onto the fawn. So this is the front leg here, where you go um, fold it in half and then um, have the, the, the sort of um, the elbow here at the front and then um, this one here you actually this is folded three times where these two bits here they become the solid part of the hind leg so that's almost like the hip there and then you have that bit coming here to the front so that's exactly how the hind legs needs to be folded so you're um, you're going this way first then um, round and then out again so bearing in mind that this leg is is meant for the slightly a smaller fawn, this is basically how you needle felt the leg on and you're not worrying one little bit that it just looks like you've just um, attached a leg to a fawn because once you start covering it with wool, it will um, look completely different. And then this part here, this part here will then become um, this sort of chunkier part here um, and so inside there is the, the gap between um, the leg that's been folded. So that's basically how you um, make the leg and, um, and, um, and then attach it. And then obviously the front leg here is um, slightly different. But um, I hope that um, that will help you with the instructions. Um, the wire pulls out. You do not use the wire um, inside the phone. The, there will be a bit of the wire used inside the phone, but that is to put it in the uh, in the neck and um, to fasten the head onto it. But you do this after you have made the legs when you don't need the uh, wire for the um, the legs anymore. So I hope that um, that's been um, a useful little tutorial. And um, yeah, just have a go if you want. I'm gonna have a cup of tea now. Um, join our everyone a maker. Um, Facebook page if um, you haven't joined yet. Right, let's have a look at um, what everybody is um, talking about here. Um, okay, I'm, I'm, I have to scroll up to uh, make sure I'm looking at the... Um, Okay, so we, we stopped with um, Donna giving useful advice of how Helen can actually follow the chat. I think that's worked, so it's coming um, through now. Excellent. Um, and um, the boxes and all the products are amazing. Oh, thank you, Jane. <laughs> that's very kind of you to say that. Um, so again, Teresa has also followed Donna's advice and she can uh, listen to the comments um, again or, or see the comments again. That's great. Mm. And um, <laughs> Donna says, I'm not technical, but had to try something yesterday as mine was wasn't working. Yeah, you when you get um, I, I've had this a couple of times. 
and your brain kind of goes into um, a frozen mode what it does with me anyway where I think every second counts and I'm not seeing it and I don't know what to do and I can't think straight anymore and I, I don't I just don't know what to do this is what happens with me when technical um, things go hideously wrong and suddenly a second um, is actually a minute or yeah it just feels like that anyway so well done for sorting this um, oh, somebody's on their fifth box um, just missed that line um, oh D it's your first box how exciting so you will um, get either the, the felting mat and um, the uh, the new wool mat or the foam mat we don't, we're not quite sure about that yet um, oh, are you are you um, I don't know if Sophie's watching now but um, uh, because I only can see the makers comments and it could be anybody um, who um, uh, um, answers from our YouTube channel. Hi, Alex. While the cat's away, the mice will play. Sophie and Emma. That's it. <laughs> yes, I don't know what they get up to. But one thing I do know, they're not um, in, in the same location, so it would be quite hard to get up to something very silly. So I think I'm safe. Um, that's really useful. Thank you. So I hope that is to do with the leg. Thank you. I'm sure that will come in very useful when I get my kit. Excellent. Um, thank you for showing us. You're very welcome, Diane and everybody else. Not brave enough to try anything that big yet. Now, I I kind of know what you mean about size because the smaller you go, um, the less detail you need to add. But the bigger you go, um, it kind of it's more fun because you've got more scope to um, yeah to just be a bit freer. So um, yeah, just just be brave. Be brave, Helen. Um, I have one of your earth mats and it is fab. The firm bottom mat is great for templates. Oh, that's brilliant. I, I Yeah, that's really good to know that you're using the firm um, mat for... for I, I accidentally yesterday used it because I wasn't using a coarse needle. It actually worked quite fine. So they are... Um, you can use them interchangeably. The top one is the softer mat and if you need to use a multi-tool or a coarse needle, then we would definitely recommend have the soft top um, on the top. Um, I love the phone. All your kits are great. Thank you, Louise. Um, can't wait for Posty to deliver. Looking forward to making my phone. Um, thank you, Teresa. And um, uh, I found bigger easier. Okay, so there you go. It's not so fiddly. Yeah, everybody likes different things. So this this was the leg of the phone. But what I want to show you now is um, how to mix wool. And um, that's another technique, mixing wool for the phone. Um, because you will have to do an awful lot of mixing. Hardly anything on this phone is um, the actual um, single colour. So you might curse me at the end of this project for mixing wool, but I will also show you what you can use to um, make slight shortcuts. Um, unfortunately, it does mean you have to invest in a, in a, in a small carder, at least one, because I'll show you some flick carding as well. But um, you might have one at home as well. But um, it's definitely worth um, thinking about. And they're not, they're not massively expensive. Um, and if you, if you are still waiting for your sub box, remember you can add anything to your sub box. And um, it takes quite a lot. A lot. It's up to, um, I think it's up to one kilo that we can add in there. And uh, the box itself, or maybe it's up to two kilos. I can't remember now. But it, I don't think anybody's ever struggled to... Um, add enough into it and then and then we had to send it um, in a second parcel anyway. So I think you can um, add quite a lot into it. So I will show you how to mix wool now. I'm just going to put, in fact, I'll put you here. You can just look pretty there. Oh, the head's a bit wobbly on this one. Um, that was my prototype. Stay up there then. Okay, she's just going to, she's just going to um, lie down and wait for her mum while, um, yeah, while I'm felting. So in your um, pack, you get these um, colorways there. So you've got your main um, wool, and I'm going to go a little bit smaller now again, so you can see the colors. So you have um, you have your your black wool that you use for eyes and the nose, but you won't be using all of this, so there will be some left over. You've got the Manx Lauten, which 
um, we chose because it's such a beautiful color. It's this lovely caramel. Um, yeah, it's just a really lovely color and works perfectly for a fawn. And then you've got your third white here. So this one is the New Zealand Merino, which we sell lots of in dyed varieties, but this is the natural um, um, color. And then we've got um, our New Zealand light yellow. So to get this effect on the fawn, um, where it sort of looks slightly um, golden and um, almost like the sun's shining on it it's a it's lying somewhere in the in the um, in the part of the wood where it's been told to stay still until mum comes back and um, to achieve that you um, can mix this one with the yellow you can also get a, a lighter version by mixing the white and the Manx Lauten. And you can even mix a darker version if you need to, like um, it's happened here on the around the, the nose there. And that is basically, uh, that's the Manx Lauten, the brown mixed with the black. In any case, your mixing can take place like this. So you have a strand like that and then you use a tiny tiny amount and you use the tiniest amount of these um, of the yellow in there in fact that's probably too much but I just give it a go and you lay them on top of each other and then um, what you do is you you tear you actually do tear this apart this Manx Lauten does tear easily and that helps you to make shorter um, fibers um, so that if you do something like the head where you don't need great long fibers you can just mix that together with and pull it apart and that's basically how you um, mix a new colorway so you make a blonder version of the Manx Lauten or almost one that's a, um, a little bit more golden and you can probably um, see the difference I just try and lay it on my hand so you can see the difference it's a slighter um, lighter uh, slightly more light um, no slightly lighter is that right yeah um, version of, of, of this mix and that I think that what makes the fawn so attractive is that there are different shades of the Manx Lauten in there. If you want to add a little bit of white you can, you can add it either with a, with a yellow or you can add it um, just with a brown and the white. In any case the brown will always be the main colour and the other colours will be um, added in in the tiniest um, amounts. I promise you that you will have yellow left over and you will have white left over so there are generous amounts in there because you're using very very little wool and then when you have got um, the mix that you want you um, lay this onto the fawn and the idea is that you lay it so that um, you start um, you start from the base and work your way up because that's how naturally the fiber would be over the bottom part here and so you lay this down and then you just stab this into um, the fawn with your felting needle and fasten it on. And then the next batch that you would be mixing would then sit on top of that um, to reach over the layer that you've just, so ever so slightly over the layer that you have just put on. So that is the, the way that you will be dressing the whole fawn in different ways. When you, you start with the head, but when you get to the body, it works a little bit faster because you, you have got um, a larger area to, to cover um, straight away. So that's a lot faster to cover this. Now, this is okay mixing with the hand for small areas because you're trying to prepare small um, parts of the, of, um, of the mix. If you've got larger areas to cover, like the back of it, and they're all pretty much the same, and you're using um, adding a little bit of white into it, you can use um, a carder. We sell these two sizes. Um, this is a small and this is a medium. The idea is that one day we have a large one, but um, that hasn't materialized. So um, don't look for a large one. We've only got these two sizes, small and medium. And you can use um, either size. Um, and the way that flick carding works, and I might have to just go a little bit bigger with the screen again, because otherwise um, I'll go out of the picture. So the way that flick carding works, I'm just going to put that fawn out of the way, is that you've got your wool and you um, you literally, you you sort of flick it off the, um, and you even need to go bigger because you can't see that either. And you, you, you flick it off your hand. So um, you kind of brush it off your hand until it gets less and less. 
and then you take it off the card and then you repeat the process. So in the process of doing that, you is actually mixing, even though you don't feel it is doing very much, but it is mixing. Can you see how this is starting to become a mix? And um, and then you just take the rest off again. So there's still a lot of white there but you can uh, mix it in the way what what's nice about this is that the the fibers are really being a uh, brushed to go, to go in one direction and it does give a really nice neat mix of wool there and so that is a good way to um speed up your mixing so if you only want to invest or if you only have got one carding brush that's absolutely fine however if you have two and they don't have to be the same size but i'm using two small ones here then you can um you you don't need to use your hands and um hit your hand with these um steel bristles you can um put this on your carding brush and then you just brush in the opposite direction so you're brushing the wool um from one carder to the other so that when you take this off can you see how how that is mixed now you get a nice uh, a nice mix of the wool and then that can be fastened onto your phone um, if you want to mix it anymore you just put it back on and that's um, basically how you mix wool for um, dressing your phone and um, the white spots are actually added at the very end but you can of course and I just use this one because this is the one that you're making you can of course already um, keep the wool sort of slightly lighter like um, like here at the front where it's um, um, quite pale because under their tummy that they stay white so um, that's the way to mix wool and um, hopefully you um, have learned something today and you can make your um, best mix for the fawn I'm just gonna have another cup of tea Okay, so let's see how everybody's getting on. Um, so we've, yeah, that's it. Um, so Teresa says um, she found bigger felting projects easier than smaller ones as they're not so fiddly. We mentioned that earlier. Um, uh, and of course, yes, Helen, there are always people about who can help and advise um, on the Facebook page. Yeah, everyone a maker. Definitely join our Facebook page, everyone a maker. Um, if you haven't joined yet, we will ask you to um, answer the questions. Um, so um, unfortunately, unless you answer the questions, we, we can't let you join because um, we need the right kind of people. And even though you might you might be the perfect person, but you didn't answer the questions, we are not to know that. So do answer the questions. So easy, just three questions. Most of them just require for you to say yes, basically. And um, um, yeah, just just answer the questions, basically. Can't say it any clearer. Um, and um, I seem to live through Facebook as people are so helpful. Oh, thank you. Um, hell, that's Helen. I found big, bigger things easier too. So that comes from Ross. So there's two already. Um, oh, and there's Sophie now. You can add whatever you like into an add to subs box order. So go crazy. Give us a challenge. <laughs> oh my God. You asked for it now, Sophie. Oh. Um, yes. Yeah, so the add to subs needs to go into the code box. If you put it in the note box it, box, it will not automatically take the postage down to zero. So you must put that into the into the code box um, instead of um, the, the um, note box. Um, okay, I think you've given Faith a challenge there, Sophie. Uh, very late to the party. Sorry, Steffi, hope everyone is okay. Hi, Sarah, it's really nice to see you. And of course, if you're talking about Facebook, Sarah Brown, who's just joined us, is um, heads up the uh, Facebook group, group Needle Felting UK, definitely worth joining there. Um, if you wanna see it anywhere, you'll see it there. And um, there's lots, lots of talent on that site, but also lots of help and lots of, um, it's a really friendly bunch. So everybody's very supportive. Um, whereas the makers page, I'm not saying we're not friendly and supportive, but the um, everyone a maker is just purely about makers products. So um, that's, that's what you sign up for basically, that you support us 
and um, you share what you make from our uh, materials, our ideas, books, instruction, boxes, whatever. And um, we'll just ooh and coo and ah over it because we love it um, and we love to see it. But it's a great way of um, giving people uh, tips of what works for you. And it's great to see how some of our world can be used and what it um, looks like or how you use some of the materials or tools, what works for you. So it's a great way of getting feedback on products and um, making choices in the future. Right. Um, that Thanks. That's the great demo. We'll use that in, in other projects, I think. Yes, definitely the um, the flick carding. Is that what we're talking about here? I hope. Um, when I was spinning, I used two carders going from one to the other. That's right. Um, but not everybody wants to buy two carders. So the flick carding is definitely um, a good way to, to get um, to a similar result. Yes, it's lovely. I'm really looking forward to getting creative with the wool mixing and make my own unique fawn. Oh, oh. Great. Okay. So I think we can um, put the phone to one side now because um, there are the two major, um, the one thing I haven't shown you, which I said I would, and I don't know if it's very clear, but this is the lanolin rich that you get in there. So the difference between the lanolin rich and the basic core wool is that they, they kind of on face value, they have a very similar color. So that's um, to start with, that's quite confusing. The lanolin rich is comes in really um, almost like in in big patches. So it's it's we buy it on a massive big roll like a carpet and it sort of naturally wants to stick to itself. So you can see that that is already different. The fibers are really long. So if you get confused, I'm just going to tear off some fibers here and they are actually the staple is quite long. So they're not, um, and, and that makes it really lovely um, to um, to put around, say, something because it holds together really tight, okay? So that is how you recognize the lanolin. I recognize it by smell as well. Oh, I love the sheep smell. Oh, I'm just gonna have to have a little sniff. I love this. I don't know what that smells like. Oh my goodness, that definitely smells more sheepy. So the core, <laughs> the core wool smells borderline um, comforting, but definitely there is a definite ping in, pang in there. But not bad. I can I can live with that. It was just like I was so trusting of this smell. But it almost smells more of like more of the straw and you know the kind of dreams that sheep are made of, that sort of thing. This one smells down to earth sheep. And it's very bitty at times, so it's not so nice together. So um, when you when you tear it, you might you might get longer strands. Some of it is is nicer than others. This is why we use it on the inside of our projects. When where if you get a bad patch, which we can't control, I say bad patch. It's not a bad patch. Um, at least you can put it on the inside, and then nobody will see it. It's great for building up bulk quick. So that's the difference between these two worlds. But when they're side by side, you can probably identify um, the two next to each other. Okay, fawn done. Let's talk about um, the fl uh, pansy flower fairy. So I'm just going to put this you can go behind me again there. And um, the pansy flower fairy. Here she is. There. We don't need cards for her. So... Um, there's the pansy flower fairy. I haven't opened the box yet. I'm going to do that now. And um, we've gone pink with um, the fairy box, as you um, imagine. So it comes in a pink envelope that fits through your letterbox, okay? So the main difference is that this one is obviously a large letter postage. So therefore, even though the price is very similar to the maker's box, it's actually cheaper because it has got um, half the postage. And then when you open it, out pops, the wrong way around. When you open it, out pops a fairy box. And um, the fairy box is um, also pink. It's a paler pink. There you go. And um, um, on the box, you can see what you're making. It makes one fairy. And, um, and then um, I'm just going to open that. It's actually, it's very stuffed full, so it wants to pop open already. And then you've got your um, box here. As before, 
you have um, your newsletter in there. That's the same as with um, all of our um, uh, subscription boxes. Also, you've got tissue paper. And then you have got the instructions. And you also get um, a little newsletter with this as well. So the newsletter changes, obviously, with every fairy project. There you go. Um, again, as with um, the Maker's Box, we have a little introduction. I will um, read the first bit to you as I did with the other one as well. So um, continue your collection. And this is the Fairy Box number 2, May 2020. So it's a brand new subscription box and it's a hanging pansy flower fairy. Wow, how did we get to the second box of this collection already? A special thank you to those who have subscribed and therefore saved 20% per box. The difference between this subscription box and the makers box is that you can actually buy the individual boxes you don't need to subscribe but if you do subscribe you save yourself 20% I should also mention that all of our subscriptions um, you we, we do not tie you in a contract you can unsubscribe anytime if you um, feel you don't want it anymore you just cancel your subscription better still don't cancel your subscription but just skip a payment sometimes not every project is for everybody sometimes you will get too busy sometimes you um, go away for six weeks when everything's back to normal you might be going on a on a, a cruise or travel the world or whatever you might be doing stay, stay with your family for two years um, then you might want to um, skip payments of um, specific boxes that doesn't mean to say that you lose your subscription it just means that you're not getting the boxes for those months that you've chosen to skip okay so um by now you may have watched our live stream on youtube on how to make the basic shape of a fairy that we did that yesterday and it's still on youtube if you want to um watch this if not the tutorial will stay on our youtube channel and you can see for yourself how easy they are to make and what great potential for other figures there is the pansy flower fairy becomes complete by making small pansies to decorate her dress or hair or even to hold in her hands. For this you will need felt tip pens in the colours pink, purple and yellow and yes it's a bit like cheating but so totally worth it. I was so excited um, that you don't need to needle felt these pansies but you can actually cheat and at first I felt a little bit guilty and then I thought well what, why not? There's no craft police. Nobody can say well you're not allowed to colour in felt with pens. Who says that? Nobody. So therefore, we, we are doing it. So um, again, it tells you the box contents here. It always shows you next month's project. That's the same with the uh, main makers box as well. And um, you also get um, a discount on the fairy collection. Um, so you get the code is in this newsletter. I won't tell it to you because that wouldn't be fair to those who subscribe or get the box. And, um, and for this um, one that will also stay live until the 14th of June, so it always stays live for a month. And here you get wool top, standard core wool, pipe cleaner and felt sheets um, at 15% discount. So well worth it, you get something extra um, on top of it. And then with your first box, you get our basic shape for angels, fairies and figures instruction booklet. And in there, um, it tells you how to make the first stage of any of the figures that will be in this uh, fairy box. So this is the bit of piece of paper that you will hold on to for your subsequent fairy boxes. We're not going to send this in every single one. It is literally um, just a couple of pages inside and then on the back it shows you all the kinds of things that you could be making with um, the basic shape instructions. So even though you're just um, getting it for the fairy box, it might spur you off to do something else as well. And um, these instructions, um, remember to keep them safe. You're only getting them in the And then you get your um, instruction sheet. And um, that follows on from the basic instructions. So you always start by reading the basic instructions. And it does tell you on the first page here, it always says, um, make the basic fairy shape according to the basic shape for angels, fairies, and figures instructions. And then it uh, might there might be a variation so it will say here in this case note that in step 7 you should use a 16 to 18 centimeter long pipe cleaner length in step 10 use the flesh pink wool top to make the arms so it's basically it just gives you a, a slight variation to the basic shape for um for making the fairies 
And um, and that's basically, again, it's a much shorter instruction than for the maker's box. These fairies are really quick and easy to make. They are, there's very little needle felting, um, which is one of the reasons why we actually only put one felting needle into every box. So you get a medium felting needle in there. There it is. It's all wrapped up. It's got a sticker on there that says warning um, contains um, a sharp needle and it's not a toy. You get your single needle and then uh, you get little accessories. In this case, you've got tiny little um, um, like l little rhinestones in there. I won't tip them out now because I'll probably lose them. And um, for the pansy fair, you get a, a piece of felt. This will make several pansies. So um, you, you'll be quite excited to see that. And then you get uh, your pipe cleaner. That's really important that you've got a pipe cleaner. And then you get in there also your wool bats. Um, this, th for this particular project, you need that. That's like a petticoat um, under the fairy to make her slightly more... Um, um, what's the word? I want to say voluptuous, but she's not voluptuous. It just it just bulks her out a little bit. And then you get um, the flesh pink wool that you need for um, the face and the hands and the arms. In this case, you get the black wool in there for the hair. And then you get um, this this um, bit of wool here to tie around the waist. You also get your um, purple wool for the main body. And then you get a, um, a string in there as well and, um, and a, a silky thread to hang the fairies up as well that all comes in this tiny little box that fits through the letterbox but it's full of magic so um, it's it's lovely to receive and lovely to make and we've had some beautiful feedback from people um, who were making the fairies so let's look a little bit closer um, at this fairy so the, she's she's decorated now with these little um, gemstones that are um, glued onto her dress so you will need for this project you will need glue as well um, you definitely need little scissors and um, and I've curled her hair and I will try and um, um, explain how how this is done again um, during this um, live stream so that um, you can you don't she can have straight hair she looks absolutely fine with um, straight hair there I really like it actually she doesn't have to have curls. Straight hair is fine. But if you want curls, then you can make black curls um, yourself. You don't need to be um, particularly gifted with any other crafty... Oh, she's fallen down. Oh, dear. She's fallen down proper. No. Come on. There you go. I'll just keep her here for now. There, she can sit there. So, um, as with the phone, I really would like to do a little tutorial on... Um, and I'm showing you how to make... The curls I have covered this several times before whether it's on the um, tutorial video or whether we did it on our free tutorials page on the on our website and even did it to one through one of the live streams and this is basically how to make um, straight hair curly okay how to make straight hair curly this is what you get in the um, fairy subscription box it's a wool it's a South American wool top, so it's um, it's a merino. It's fairly fairly fine, but not too fine. You need a crochet hook, um, poten potentially. Um, this one is a two and a half millimeter one, um, or you need a bamboo skewer. I've got that as well, but I just need to go diving for it. Okay. So basically, you just need a little wooden a wooden stick, but I've got a bamboo skewer here, which is probably about the same. Um, you know, this is what you put kebab, kebab bits together with. Um, so either of this will work. If you can crochet, then you um, um, separate. In fact, I'm going to go small now because I'm wearing um, a black top that doesn't work at all. So I'm going really close up with this one. So you separate your wool, keep them really thin, the strands. So that is actually one strand of um, hair that will go on the fairy. And then you just put a slip knot in there as if you're starting to crochet. There. So I've got my um, start here. And then I'm going to crochet the rest of this um, into um, a really, really short strand. Because that's all I can manage with this wool and my crochet hook I've got to hand. So I'm making literally every strand of the um, of this separately. 
you could also plait it that's another way of getting a curl in there but um if you if you crochet it and then the ma most important thing is that you keep that loop here at the back don't pull it keep it open because when um when you unwrap it this is where you need to pull to get the curl to open up again and then the next step is which i can't show you because that's um that's just something you need to do in your own time once you've made a few strands and you, you can get several out of this then you um, make this really wet run it under water give it a good old squeeze and then leave it to dry you can speed the drying up by putting it on a radiator uh, you can put it in a fan oven on a on a really low setting it always makes me laugh because um i, I made curls and my husband came home and he said oh what's in the, what's in the oven i'm like curls so can i eat it i said no <laughs> So, yeah, anyway, it speeds it up, especially if you've got a fan oven. Just don't put it on a high temperature. You're not, you're not baking. You're literally just um, letting the hot air dry it faster. And, um, and then when it is dry, then you have your loop that you left open um, and you're just going to pull and let it untangle. Now, these have not been made wet, so they're, they haven't, they're not holding their curls. But these were made in exactly that way and they do hold their curl. So you can see you can make curls really easily by um, crocheting a strand. Now, if you can't crochet, that's not um, um, that's absolutely fine. Then you just use a strand of wool and you use your bamboo skewer and you start wrapping it. Now, when we talk about wrapping wool around a wire or anything like this, we always say and can't say it often enough. Keep it flat like a ribbon with this one. It's exactly the opposite. You are actually holding on to it and you want it to curl in itself so that it becomes really string like. So it's actually um, it's not sticking to itself. It's literally sitting side by side by by uh, like fat little strands of of string um, so that it makes it, um, it you're twisting the wool in itself as well because you're not letting go of it. And then when you get to the end, just go back over the same again and let that wool sort of disappear into um, the rest so it doesn't pop open and unwind and then um, again make this wet put another layer over there can cover the whole of the um, bamboo um, uh, stick here and we'll use another one as well and then when this is dried after you've made it really really wet all you do is you just um, slip it off can't slip it off put it on so tight um, well you might have to give it a sort of a little twist to undo it slip it off and then you, um, you've you made a little corkscrew curls. Um, so that's just another way of um, making curly, curly hair um, from straight tops. So that basically is um, a very quick tutorial on how to make, um, how to make curly hair on a fairy um, or any curly, any curls from, um, from straight wool. Um, and it, it does work really well. So I'm hoping that um, got some more comments here and then um, yes so um, somebody's asking can you get the first fairy still yes you can so we we um, we make x amount every month and then if they don't sell they'll just be sold um, as an ordinary fairy which reminds me um, that needs to be put into our um, shop as an option that you can just buy um, a fairy um, the fairy boxes from the previous months and the spring fairy is certainly still available. So that is definitely the case. Hopefully Emma can do something about about that or Sophia or I will. Um, so, for example, um, so there's a question there. Oh, I need to just scroll up. Um, I'm a cereal wool sniffer. First thing I do when wool arrives. Yeah, I know. I, it, it, for me, it reminds me of my childhood. I think I spent a lot of time... Um, not so much with sheep, but with goats, and it's that um, it's that hay smell up on in the wool. Um, Emma from the makers, that's us. Jane um, Bayliss, the um, the subscriber discount code each month, as featured on your newsletter, can be used in the codes box when placing an order. So there is actually that is a point. You can only use one code in a in our code boxes. You can't like line them up. So if you've got a code for free something, or if you want to get add to subs, or if you want to get a discount, you can only use one code. It doesn't mean to say you can't have the other bits. 
too, but you have to um, let us know so that we can help you with it. Um, but um, yeah, just if you want to say add to ZAP, but you want 15% discount with your code, it might be better just to use the 15% discount code and then let us know that you need the postage refunding. That's probably easier that way around for us. But yeah, it is possible to do that. Um, right. Um, so Emma still says that um, it appear, uh, applies to specific codes that are featured in that month's project. These products are added into a collection relating to that project, project each, each month. So that is the discount you get for particular collections. For example, um, Jane, products in the phone collection will be discounted when you use the subscriber discount code for May. That's it. Can we get the first fairy still? I answered that. Um, and then, um, Emma, how do we know how much extra to order if we want to buy some fluff to make the phone again? So basically, the phone, um, I can answer that. Um, probably Emma has already. Um, the instructions tell you exactly the... Um, um, so here you go. If you want to contact us, you can, um, but it tells you exactly how much you need of each wool to make um, this size phone. And for the for the phone, it's 56 grams of lanolin rich core buds, 50 grams of basic core wool buds, 20 grams of Manx Lauten, 3 grams of natural white New Zealand, New Zealand merino bats, 1 gram of black New Zealand merino bats, and 1 gram of light um, yellow New Zealand merino bats. And then obviously you do need um, that wire um, stem because you will be using part of it to go inside the phone so you can't reuse it um, for the legs because some of it will it won't be long enough um, after that. So um, on the instruction the phone yes so you're saying that same thing what I've just said um, that's good. Um, yeah all of our instructions have got the, the weights on there. Um, so you can you can plait, crochet, or um, put the wool around a skewer. Um, I can't find the fairy on the website. Yes, so basically Emma is going to put the fairy onto the website um, so that you can still make the spring fairy. And then um, in June, um, are we in June next month? Yes, we are. Oh my goodness. Um, it's going to be the forget-me-not fairy. And uh, she will have some extra bits to go with it as well, but we haven't quite decided yet. Right, so the next thing I would like to show you is how to make um, these lovely little pansies. There you go. And I already um, said that they're not actually needle felted. Um, what you need for making the pansies, uh, what you get in the box is a piece of felt. So you don't have to worry about that. There's some more here and I'm going to go small now so that you can see um, close up what I'm up to. So here are the different, um, you can make them tiny, tiny. I challenge you how tiny you can go with them. I found it really, I find it really hard to make things small. So for me, that was a bigger struggle. But you get um, a 10 by 10 centimeter felt piece, which looks as big as that. And you can get quite a lot of these tiny, if you imagine you use maybe sort of um, probably one, two, three, four, you can get five and then another one. If you you could get six of these tiny um, little pansies out of there. Um, or you could get um, bigger ones. Um, we have actually got three sizes in the instruction. There is a template in there, down there, that you can use to make your fairy um, pansies in, in, the, in either of those sizes. Um, or you can just make up your own size. Now I've made so many of these that I'm not even going to use the template. But what you do at home is you use your template and you're going to cut um, um, around it and then you um, lay it onto the wool and either cut around it freehand or you draw around the template, whatever suits you. Now I'm just going to fold the felt because like I said, I've done this so often and the way that I do it, and maybe this is also the way you want to do it in the future, I'm going to have three same size squares um, here. So there's number one, number two and three, and they're on top of each other. And I know that um, I need to cut three of the same petals, which are a little bit, they're a little bit like a heart shape without the dint, um, the dent at the top. So that's all I'm gonna, I've cut so many of these that I can actually cut them freehand now, and I'm sure you can get there as well. But if you can't, you will your, your, 
your template. So I'm just going to go round. I'm cutting three at the same time because I'm lazy when it comes to things like that. So I've made um, a, a shape here that's now still connected here at the bottom. So I'm going to cut that open and they're sort of pretty much the same size and shape now. That's my three identical petals. And now I've got to make a third that is um, a figure of eight. And to do this, what am I doing, Stephanie? Stop prattling around. Here we go. So because I've done this before as well, I'm, I'm folding one in half. So this is one strip of the 10 centimeters that I've used now. And I'm um, cutting just um, a circle out that's still connected to the center bit here. And as soon as I open this up, I've made a what I call a figure of eight. So now these are these are the only four shapes that I need to make one of these pansies. And now the fun bit starts. So I'm going to, um, I need a piece of paper because I don't want to draw on, okay, I'm going to draw on, on this piece of paper here now, put this out of the way. So let's bring these in again so you can see where I'm heading. So all you need is, now I love Sharpies, but you might have just ordinary felt pens at home. All you need is a purple, a pink, and a yellow. That's all you need. Um, you could even get away just with um, with one purple, but you do need a yellow, definitely. So, and what you do is you take your, you take two of the petals are the same, are identical. So these are being colored in the same way and it tells you on the instructions of how to color them in. Step by step, and if you don't believe me, I'll show you. Oh no, that's the wrong, I've got so many instructions. Oh, they're down here. So you start, um, in fact, I've started somewhere else entirely. So I'll, I'll go with this. Um, I use one of these petals and um, and the figure eight first, and they're going to be colored in yellow. And what you do is you leave the edges slightly um, white, so you don't need to color it in too precisely. In fact, it looks really nice if you make um, a less perfect job because um, this sort of the, the, the color runs into the white but doesn't it you don't want to line basically that's what i'm saying so these are uh, done for now and then you take um your pink or your purple you can pick or choose i'm just reminding myself what color that is that's quite a light i've got another pink here um let's use that and then you go into the yellow but not all the way just just um so that you let the the world uh, the color run into yeah like that so you've colored you've colored these in now and then you use that um that same one and color this bit in entirely yeah do the same on here and so the idea is that you use the lighter pink first and then you use the darker purple to go into the center a little bit more so the colors they do they do vary what you end up with is um colored in fingers that that's what keeps happening to me so now you have got um two identical ones um and then um a set of um that are very similar as well and so now you do need a tiny tiny tiniest amount of felting wool um uh, but first of all you arrange the colors um the petals of the pansy as follows so you're using, you're laying the two identical um, shapes oops, up as almost like one covers the other one entirely. And then you lay the figure eight, as I call the figure eight on top, and then you lay that one. Um, so if I press this bit here now, that will make sure that all of the colors are co connected. Now you can either just use a tiny bit of black or you can use that black and mix it in with a tiny little bit of that fairy um, purple um, and you 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 um, sort of give it a pull it exactly like you did um, like I showed you earlier with a fawn pull it apart I'm not going to use all of this is way too much there and all you're going to do is just put it in the center very it's, it's such a, um, a um, yeah, it's just a little amount. And all you're doing is just stabbing that black into the center of that fairy. Sorry, not in the center of the fairy, into the center of the pansy. So what you're doing is you're actually felting this together now. I'll just add a little bit more, but you're also giving it a center, a 
black centre for that. I only seem to have very fine felty needles. Use a medium needle for this. What is rattling when I do this? Oh, I think it's the springs on the... If you can hear something weird, that's not me creaking. That's the spring on one of the extension arms. Um, I don't know why it should be rattling. Why is it rattling? Okay, no idea. Anyway, I'm done. So um, now you've got um, a center in there. The petals have been joined together. All the wools come out on the other side. And all you need to do now is add a tiny, tiniest amount of, of even tinier, of yellow into the center um, for the, for the uh, little pansy. And then um, basically you're done. And the challenge is, how small can you go? Um, because, yeah, I found that really challenging. I, but I am big, I'm better with bigger. And there you go. You've got your uh, perfect little pansy. Nobody will ever guess that you've cheated and used um, some felt tip pens. Like I say, it doesn't have to be a Sharpie. You can use any kind of felt tip pen. All you need to make sure is that you've got um, two types of pink or purple or purple and pink and then just yellow. And that way you make um, a really, really authentic looking um, pansy. And come on, somebody tell me I'm not completely crazy that this is actually amazing. So um, that's your your pansy um, uh, tutorial for the pansy flower fairy with a tiny little bit of cheating. So hope, hope that's okay. Let's just see what's going on now. Um, oh, I think Faith, you, you like that idea, right? Um, I can't find the first fairy on the website. Okay. That is coming on. Uh, we just haven't changed over yet because it was on the subscription option. Obviously, she's disappeared from there now. Um, oh, Ross needs to go. Thank you very much for watching. We've pretty much come to the end now. The only thing that I haven't done, which I will do very quickly because it's equally as exciting. We have got three subs subscription boxes and I haven't um, shown you our surprise box yet. Um, the thing is, I can't really you our sub surprise box because it wouldn't be a surprise anymore so i have to show you this is what it looks like when it comes to your door okay i will show you that and um i will um tell you i will show you a surprise box we have had in the past so just to give you an idea of what this is like this is a winter one but um of course we're already thinking of winter um, this is a winter one that's been and gone. So again, you get your newsletter in our um, our boxes and um, always on the back on this particular one was a free tutorial of how to make a pom-pom um, garland. And then you get in there, this, the, these subscription boxes don't make a particular project. You get exciting fibers. Some of them are brand new that nobody else has ever had. Um, and um, and basically this was the winter one so you get um, an idea of what you might be getting so here we had uh, blue merino silk tops sparkly stuff shetland butts flesh pink um, aqua mountain sheep back slight purple new, um, new zealand uh, butts and the theme of the box was um, winter wonderland and then it's all beautifully wrapped with um, tissue paper let's open this very gently and um, often it's you get um, a free sample in there often some of the um, items are individually wrapped as well so you basically get a delicious looking box full of delicious looking fibers and uh, you can have a little play and um, experience some new um, products so that's basically the surprise box and if i um, i'm going to be extremely mean now and i'm going to tease you with um the the may box the may surprise box and all I will say is, which is not a secret because we theme these boxes, is that it's to do with sweets. So think sweets, colours and other things. And um, I'm just going to have a little look and remind myself what we're actually, what we're actually doing. Where's that piece of paper gone? I had, I had to write it down. Um, oh, here we go. Can't, can't show you this. Ooh, I think you might be in for a surprise with oh, there are two really new nice new colors they're so nice and so new 
And I give you a little clue. Emma really likes them, but can't say anything. Oh, okay. It's really going to be exciting. So if you want to um, find out what's in the surprise box, the only way to get that is either by subscribing or by waiting until other people um, share their secret um, and their stash with you. But that might not be for a month or so because people are very kind and they don't uh, give the surprise away. So that's basically uh, from us today. We will be doing these um, unwrapping of the makers boxes at the beginning of each month. Um, I'm sorry if it's taken a little bit longer than usual. I try and um, keep it um, sweet and short next time. But um, that's been really lovely to have so many of you on board. Um, oh, brilliant. You all like the funsies. I'm glad to hear because I do. Um, yes, thank you so much. And um, I won't keep you any longer. The sun's out now, but we had all kinds of weather today. In fact, the 1st of May, we've just had the whole April weather in one day. From hail to rain to storm to sun to more rain and hail and storm and sun. So it's all happened today. Um, but we can't complain about the weather and uh, um, as always just stay safe we'll be back with you next week with uh, a few more live streams I have no idea what I'm doing next week but um, I'm, I'm it's fine to find out uh, an hour or so before and um, and hopefully you've enjoyed um, the unveiling of the of the um, different subscription boxes that we're doing and um, hopefully you get yours soon and we can see your fawn, your fairy or whatever you make from the surprise box. So until then, I really thank you from the bottom of our heart. You have been an absolutely amazing audience and amazing customers. We couldn't um, hang in there um, without you. And um, like I said, it's been a tough old um, six weeks or thereabouts. Everything's been topsy-turvy everything's been different as with everybody um, else so thank you so much for your support and um, I can only say it over and over again but I won't say it because you um, you probably have got other things to get on with so do I so um, basically stay safe and stay uh, well and have a lovely weekend and we see you all next week bye